I love this beef sausage. So good, so spicy, numbs your lips. Have to get another plate and I'm mixing it with the easiest time. It's like that. Mm. Mm. Good morning everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been here coming at you from Punica, Bhutan. Today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you to experience a local village. We're starting off right here at the resort with some breakfast, you know, traditional breakfast. Got some rice porridge, we're also getting some fried rice and some easy, which is like super spicy chili salsa. And then after this, we're going straight to the village, we're gonna explore the village, and we're gonna have a lunch out there. And I'm very excited because I haven't really experienced local village yet. I haven't like walked through, I mean, I went to one area, we just walked through a little bit, but this is gonna be like a real local experience. I'm very excited. And here we go. Third day in Bhutan, trying some rice porridge. I personally like rice porridge, but I have to add some type of heat because if not, it's, uh, it's too bland, right? Mmm. This is actually very tasty. Mmm. So we got the other rice. Oh, that's different fried rice. This is very different. Okay. And then that's the easy. I love the easy. I put the easy in everything. Some easy, spicy. So mix the easy with the rice porridge. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, lots of heat. Mmm. Easy, spicy chili salsa. So right here we have the fried rice. So this fried rice, as I said, it's a little different. It's not like regular fried rice, it's more sticky. Almost like a like a sticky risotto, right? And there's what is in here. So we have some like some long beans in here, some onions, some more. Love this easy. Super spicy salsa. So I guess I'm gonna use a spoon for this. Mm-hmm. Chilies. Mm -hmm. So it's spicy, like risotto fried rice. It's just the best thing I compare it to, the risotto, because it's very sticky. Risotto is a little more watered down. It's like almost pure stick. Mm -hmm. Get some of the easy. Go. In case you guys haven't seen any of my other videos, they love spicy food here in Bhutan. And every single dish that you eat, will have chilies in it, red or green. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is amazing fried rice. Mm. You no, know, I personally don't eat fried rice for breakfast. In Asia, you'll, you'll learn that it's a big part of the culture. You know, rice, basically every country is rice. Um, you know, from China, South Korea, Japan, all the way down here. Mm. Mm. It's so good. Spice level, let's say eight. So the fried rice is like a creamy fried rice. And you actually have red chili and green chili. Plus the easy. Oh. I love Bhutan. Mm. Fried rice with chilies in Bhutan, nothing like it. Here in Bhutan, the way it works is that most hotels just have buffet, like just regular like Western slash Indian breakfast. But if you want to go you know, the way I go, which is like eating Bhutanese food all day, every day, that's it. I'm gonna ask for some traditional dishes. It's extra, but it's fine. Mm. So good. Because we're right next door to India, they also have milk tea, which is chai. Mm, with ginger. Wow. Mm, yeah, I prefer this over this coffee, for sure. Yeah, this is some black coffee. This is phenomenal. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Let's go now to the local village. Morning. Morning, sir. How are you? Good. See? Hello, morning. How are you doing? I'm good. You? Good. Ready to go, man. Where are we going? First, we will be hiking up to the Temple of Fertility and we will be walking through the village and you are going to see lots of falas. Okay, so we're going for a hike and then we're going to the village. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. We will be walking through the village to the temple. Oh, walking through the village to the temple. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, great. 
Oh, another great day, man. Beautiful. It's actually a little colder today. A yeah, little colder. Okay, should I have brought gloves? No, no, no not that cold. It. I don't know. <laughs> Look at the walls of every house painting. You could see a picture of Fallon. It is a symbol of fertility and it will chase away the evil spirit. So every single house has this? Yes, everyone. Whoa, That's look at this. I call this village the city of Fallas. City of Fallas? Yes, you'll see it everywhere. Look right here. So it's basically uh, a penis that has eyes. <laughs> it's just a painting they did. Just a painting? Yeah, yeah, obviously, obviously. And then in, in the store, they sell penises. Yes, everywhere. This is awesome. Whoa. This is unique. It dated back from the 15th century. We have a Tibetan saint called Dukpakinle. He came to Bhutan in 15th century. He subdued lots of evil spirit using his phallus and he called it the magic thunderbolt. This is really funny. On the stairway going up to this restaurant, you have a penis over here and one over here. Like, so the whole area has uh, penises on the walls basically. I mean, but this is not just an ordinary penis, obviously. And the penis has like fangs. A little scary, but it's cool. And this is an authentic painting and product shop, so souvenir shop. And over here, look, all these different souvenirs, all penises. I mean, <laughs> sorry, this is just really funny. I've never been to a place like this. This is really interesting. So all these are traditional houses and they all have phalluses all over them. Yes. Is there a certain reason why some are different colors, some yeah. have eyes? About the colors, the, we really don't have any meaning. It's just the painters who have like painted it in a different color. Okay. It's just the palace which has the meaning. That is, it is a symbol of fertility and it will water away the evil spirit. And that's it guys, I mean you walk through the village, it takes around two minutes. That's all the houses, really beautiful architecture and the palaces are everywhere obviously and once you pass that we we'll make it here and right this is basically rice paddy fields and uh, yeah so it's basically restaurants and uh, handcraft souvenir shops right and then all the souvenir shops obviously sell uh phalluses yeah different size of phalluses different size of phalluses and that's the symbol of fertility guys i mean that's that's the meaning of it fertility and it washes away or you know keeps away evil spirits whoa this is beautiful man the village's name is sob sohab so this is the first part of the village and then you walk through this rice paddy field and you make it the second part of the village so it's, so it's the same village but in between you have a rice paddy field look so you have the water right here it's a little wet, you gotta be careful, you can slip. Just try to stay in the dry areas. Okay, hard here. Stupa! So this is a water prayer bell. So with the help of water, it turns. I like this. This is cool, man. I've never seen it before. The prayer bell with water running through. Took one minute to pass the first part of the village. Took like an extra three minutes to cross the rice paddy field. And here we are entering the second half of the village. And from here, we're gonna make our way through and go all the way up to the monastery. And here again, lots of different craft shops, lots of phalluses all over the walls. This is awesome. And how many people live in this village? Uh, not more than 1,000. So less than 1,000? And over here, we have like an open kitchen. They're making some tea. We have a well right here. So you have, you know, clean water coming out. Heating the water. Yeah, just the heating water right here. Hey, how you doing? Nice, dude. Clean, pretty. Sop so ka, name of the village. Sop so ha. Sop so ka. More phalluses right here. And so how many souvenir shops are there? Because I'm seeing non-stop, it's like houses, restaurants, and souvenir shops. I like the chains, man. The chains are cool. I'm gonna buy something. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. Look at this. Whoa, it's a huge phallus. Huge. So, basically you give this to somebody, if, you know, they wanna have kids, for certainty, right? Uh, for the kids, we have a different one. No, not for the kids, this is just a sign of fertility. You give it to somebody as a gift. Uh, no. So, if you want to like, give this as a gift, it has to go with watching away the evil spirit. And for the kid, you have to go to the temple. Inside the temple, you need to get a blessing. And later, you're going to see a big phallus. And the lady, she needs to carry the phallus. Circumambulate the temple three times. It's not only the Buddhist people believe, but nowadays, even the Westerners, they do believe. This souvenir shop has a few phalluses, but they also have you know, beautiful paintings, they have scarves, 
they have beads, prayer beads, and they have masks. And this is the mask you should buy when you come to Bhutan. This is like the most traditional, and it's 1,500 new, which is how much dollars? Something like uh, $15 something. I don't know the exact number right now, but this is it. You can also get a different one. I mean, there's, they're all beautiful. They're all made out of ceramic. But personally, I'm gonna buy myself one of these, but I'm gonna get a bigger one. So I'm gonna buy it when I go to Power Roll. I like this one a lot. This is cool. This one's the best one, right? This yeah. is this is Bhutan right here. Let's go. So where are we going? Where do we we came from here and we have to climb that way? Okay. Yeah. This is beautiful. I love the housing, the architecture. If you're interested in buying a phallus, I highly recommend going to all the different souvenir shops to see what they got. That one had like five different phalluses. It had more paintings and masks. This one has tons of phalluses. This is actually my favorite. Look. So you have the phallus and you have the dragon going around it. And then you have all these red, you know, regular wood, and they say Bhutan. And that's it. Over here we have Fallas on the wall. They're doing some construction here, building some more housing. And then right back there, there's the monastery. As I just said, walk around, look for other souvenir shops, because this one right here, look at the amount of Fallas they have outside. All different sizes and colors. I mean, some of them are really cool, man. And some of them, like this one, look. So you have the waves, you have half black, half pink, and over here you have huge masks. This is the one I want to get, man. Like this. This size. But this one, this one weighs a lot. That one, I mean, I think it has too much. I want ceramic. But yeah, so all the souvenir shops are different. Some have a variety of things, some have less. Yeah. More rice paddy fields. So it's village, rice paddy fields, village, more rice paddy fields, and here they're making blocks of mud for the construction of the house. So this is how they make it right here. So they dry it out right with the sun. Yeah. And then once it's dry, they use it as bricks. Yeah. This is nice. I like this. I mean, what a variety of things happening here. <laughs> Guys, say this is like the funniest shop ever. Check this out: the phallus with the dragon, the flag of Bhutan. <laughs> this is too funny, man. And over here, look at all the different colors. So these people are really creative. So they do colors. Yeah, yeah, I will, but this is like super creative. Wow, I like some of these. The black ones with the dragons. So they have tons of palaces outside, but they also have beautiful masks inside. You know, traditional one, and you have, you know, the, the crane, more crane, different ones here. They have beads. And they have clothing, scarves, they also have like honey over here. Every single souvenir shop is different. It just really depends. And this one, the, the husband is an artist. I mean, he makes really beautiful phalluses. These are the best. Hey, these are like the best ones I've seen. And you also have here some keychains. So if you want a keychain with a phallus, you can buy one. This is the one that's the most expensive, right? $2,800 because it's wood, this one? Yeah. $2,800. In Bhutan, we call it Achara. Actually, it is called, they are called as Acharya. So they are the most learned person and they are the only person who can mimic with the religion. None other than them, they cannot, no one can mimic with the religion. 2,800 uh, new. So what's that like? That's like $50. 50. 50 for this and it's made of ceramic? Yeah, ceramic, not wood. And all the shops have a phallus right outside at the door, right? Cool. Let's continue. Let's, let's go to the monastery after seeing all these phalluses. <laughs> <laughs> Divine Madman, we called him Divine Madman because his teachings were very outrageous. Wherever he goes, he needs the best local alcohol and the best local woman. He went around the western parts of Bhutan subduing lots of evil spirits. And the demon of this village and the demon of Dochula, they combined together and they wanted to kill the divine madman. But they were not able to do. Later, when the divine madman was able to like subdue them, two of them, the combined force, they turned themselves into a black dog, came running down the valley. Near to the temple, you could see a black stupa. This is the area where the divine madman has captured the black dog subdued them and made a black stupa. Actually, the name of the tree is called is People Tree or Banyan Tree. So, in India, when Lord Buddha has got enlightenment, the area 
for the awakened one, they were called as Buddha. A banyan tree where he got enlightenment, they call it Bodhi. It's a name from a local, which means Bodhi, that means awakened. When you start entering the monastery complex, you see the prayer bell, then you have the Bodhi tree, and then you have the temple in front of you, and over here we have the black stupa where the guy subdued the black dog. The monk's chanting right here? So he has it on a speaker, he's chanting inside. Inside, we have like 108 volumes of prayer. If you turn once, it's like turning 108 volumes of prayer. So are you supposed to do all of them? Like one by one? Yeah, 108 each, but is 108 around two? Oh man. So each one has 108 prayers, and there's 108 bells. Just keep turning. Dude, it'll take a while. 108, it'll take you like three minutes. Okay. Okay, once you enter any temple, you have to take off your cap, right? And then here we have the courtyard, so we're allowed to take photos and film here, but we can't film inside the shrine because of the Buddha, and just because it's a holy place, you should never film or take photos inside. Inside is uh, basically prayers in session. It's a lot of students in there, and they also have, you know, the statues, the, the madman, right? And then they also have tons of offerings there yeah. from like, uh, booties to treats to sweets, yeah. crackers, money, I mean, every type of offering possible. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's a really cool experience walking in there and seeing the actual, the monks. And we were saying that, you know, here in Bhutan, a lot of people, you know, uh, put their kids to become a monk at an early age, six years old, right? Yeah, six years old. Six years old, yeah. and then they're a monk for life. And it's not their decision, it's their parents' decision. And yeah, it's sort of how it works, right? Yeah. When you're exiting the temple, go around the prayer bell one time. That's it. So they changed it up inside, right? The music changed. Chanting. Yeah. Now we shall go back all the way up where we started and then we will be going to the nunnery. Yeah, so we have to cross all the way back through both villages, rice paddy fields, to where the car was. Then from there, drive like 10 minutes up to the nunnery, which is right there. I can see it from here. The winter wheat. Wheat? Yes. Yeah, so there's wheat, there's rice, there's yeah. chilies. Yeah. So we're taking a different route before we get to the second part of the village. We're going through Price Paddy Fields to the left. So as you know, this village is made up of three parts, right? The part next to the monastery, then you have the Rice Paddy Fields, then you have the second part, Rice Paddy Fields, the first part where we got the car. And what we did is that once we passed, like almost at the second part of the, the village, we made a left and went through a different route. So we're going through Rice Paddy Fields now. Over here we have a stupa. We've already done like 6,000 steps today. My friend, you good? Good. To the Nanadvi, it may take around 15 minutes. And the Nanadvi, it was built in 2008. And until 2010, they were not able to start Nanadvi. So in 2010, mid 2010, they were able to start Nanadvi. Now the nun over there, they do the higher studies of Buddhism and they even do the masters in Buddhism. I've been exploring the Punaka Valley for the past three days and I haven't gone up this route yet. We've taken that main road multiple times to the fortress, past the fortress, to the guest house, but never this area. And we made a left and up here is where there's a few houses and the nunnery. There's a resort here as well. What is this? Kung Zang Hing Resort. And right here to the left, you see the beautiful valley, tons of houses, rice paddy fields, and gorgeous mountains. Another resort, so there's tons of resorts up here. Yes. Okay, I didn't know that. So the resorts are, are all scattered around the area. Yes. In the Nanari, the surrounding, they do have a fruit garden. It consists of guava, mandarin, mango, promaganate. You guys have guava? Yeah, yeah, we do. yeah I haven't tried guava yet. Let me know. Well, unfortunately, the nunnery is closed today. We got some photos from outside. You can see the fields here. So as you said before, mangoes, guava, different fruits. And right there is the nunnery. The nunnery, it was built by the father of the four queen mother. It was built in 2008. And until mid 2010, they were not able to start nunnery. It's like they were having less number of nuns. So in mid 2010, they could able to start nunnery. And now the nun here, they learn the highest studies of Buddhism. 
So that's it for the nunnery. What we're gonna do now is drive straight back to the village. You know, downhill is probably gonna be a lot faster, about 10 minutes. And there we're gonna go to have some lunch. And we're going to a what, like a traditional restaurant? Uh, actually, it's called a Chimilaga cafeteria and they do serve the traditional food too. Okay, so uh, traditional food. We have a different traditional food today. So always chili. Yes, there has to be chili and rice. And we made it back to Sopsoha, village of phalluses. <laughs> the city of Palos. The city of Palaces. And so the restaurant is the last one in the first town overlooking the paddy fields, right? Yes, yes. I recommend coming here really early like we did at 9 a.m. because there was actually no tourists. Now, as you can see, tons of people coming. And there's the restaurant, Chimi Lakhang Organic Cafe. Love this cafe. It's really like a restaurant slash cafe. As you can see, really rustic, all wood. And right here we have epic views over the village, rice powder field, mountain, and we're gonna eat some traditional Bhutanese food. And over here, they also have for sale some beautiful scarves. These are all from Bhutan? Made in Bhutan? Yes, yes. I like them, I like them, they're yes. super nice. And these, these are for the Ara. These are for Ara. And this is traditional wooden ball. Perfect. And this are all collection of Buddhist textile. David, you haven't tried this. This is called a stroke lager. The percentage of alcohol is 5%. Mm. 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 And here is our traditional Bhutanese feast. We got five things, plus we got druk, what is it, druk lager? Yeah. Druk lager, 5% alcohol, very light. You know, it's like a i say it's like a, in the Corona style and lightness, but it has a little bit of something in it, you know, like has something crafty to it. Oh, it's great beer. And here we have red rice. We have chili cheese, lots of cheese, green chilies. Here we have vegetable soup, it looks really good. Then here we have beef sausage, dried beef sausage with chilies, and this is dried pork with spinach and chilies. Dude, how do I even start this? So always go in for the red rice. Just get enough. It's enough for me right now. We're gonna get some of this, which is the chili cheese. Love the chili cheese. You're gonna have chili cheese for every single meal in Bhutan. So let's dive in, get some of the chili cheese. Oh man, this looks good. Mmm. Mmm. No, this is spicy. Mmm. Melted cheese. I like the mushrooms, but the green chili is always the hottest. Like the red chili, not so bad. Green chili, absurd. Mm-hmm. The rice really balances it. Come on the heat. Mmm. Well, awesome. Next I'm gonna try this incredible beef sausage. You can see the beef sausage actually has some chili, some chili seeds there. It's gonna be hot. Not so. Mmm. And the chili oil. Mmm. It's oily, it's crunchy. So my friend T just told me to get some of this, right? Some of the chilies and the sausage. So this is how you do it, right? You don't eat the sausage alone, you always mix it with the chilies. Mm-hmm. Mmm. That's it. So it's easy. Basically chili salsa. You have both chilies, you have onions, basically like a stir fry of chilies. Wow, that's great, man. And over here we have the vegetable soup. Light veggies. So you have spinach in here. Mmm. It's a little cloudy soup. Extremely light. No chilies. No chilies at all. And lastly, we have to have some of the pork. So dry pork. So you can see it's like basically pork fat right here. Nice piece of pork on top, like a nice layer of uh, flesh. And the bottom, that's a little hard too. So it's gelatin and layer. I'm gonna get some of this, which is basically uh, spinach with a chili. I'm just gonna cut this in half. I'll show you the gelatin right here. So grab a piece of the pork, some spinach, some of the chili. Mm. It's hard to bite through. Mm -hmm. Small layer at the bottom. So gelatin falls apart really fast. Love the combination. 
of like the sauteed chili and spinach, but the piece of uh, the layer of flesh is actually really hard. Mm -hmm. mm. Bacon with spinach and chilies. Chili cheese. I think my favorite thing on earth now is this chili cheese. It's almost like spinach dip in terms of like the consistency of it, the creaminess of it, but I want to see what chilies. Mm. It's really hot. And I love this, the beef sausage. Oh, this one's extremely hard. Can I even get it? Mm -hmm. Super crunchy. It actually feels like like the pepper in it, the chili, is actually like a Szechuan pepper. Mm -hmm. Really spicy, numbs. Oh, it's great. Then I, I, what I love the most, I think, is this, like the veg, just the spinach, with this chili. Oh, so satisfying. So flavorful. Suggest to get the easy to mix it with this beef. Mm. Beef sausage. Personally, my least favorite is this, the pork. Like it's very nice, dried pork, but you know the gelatin is good. It's the outer layer which is hard. It's too hard to bite through. So when you come to Bhutan, get ready for heat. There's heat in every dish. Mm. We're so worth it. Always get the easy. Easy is the best. I love this beef sausage. So good, so spicy, numbs your lips. Have to get another plate and I'm mixing it with the easiest time. It's like that. Mm. Mm. So good. And I have this beer to calm down the heat. Oh well, it's amazing. And that's it guys, that is the day we explored this village. Epic day, you know, we saw the phalluses, souvenir shops, we walked from one side of the village to the other, through the rice paddy fields, we went through souvenir shops, we saw the restaurants, went up all the way to the monastery, we explored the monastery grounds, you know, cool experience there. Then we went up to the nunnery, unfortunately it was closed, but we did get an epic drive going up, going up to the top of the mountain, see the beautiful scenery, just, I love the weather here. Uh, it's very relaxed, you know, it's super peaceful country. And then the food today, I mean, we started off with breakfast with delicious like rice porridge, fried rice, and easy. We're finishing up with pork, dry pork, beef sausage, spicy beef sausage with like uh, spinach, also chilies, the soup. I mean, everything's so good. And the, can't forget the chili cheese. I mean, that's the best thing ever. And yeah, guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Let me comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Bhutan. Ooh, spicy, but good. Mmm.